In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, <clears throat> amen. <clears throat> well, what's interesting in the readings that we have at the moment is that the scriptures for today in the gospel reading are almost like part two of what we had last week. And so I'm almost going to be doing that of taking some of that theme and developing it a little bit more. But what I want to do is to just do a very brief summary of what I did say last week in terms of what the scripture was. And it was all about planting seeds, planting seeds. And just on an aside, one of the things that is just incredible is that we spoke about the planting of seeds and what do we have happening next week but the Vacation Bible School. I mean, it is such an incredible witness as to who we are and what it means to plant seeds. We have 100 children, more than 100 children coming along to be part of this Vacation Bible School, some connected with our church and some far beyond. And this is exactly what it means to do the planting of the seeds. And we just affirm that so strongly in the life of our church. But last week what I spoke about was when you're trying to do the planting of the seeds, we were given four different areas that Jesus spoke about. And he said you can throw out the seeds and some of them land on the path. And the path is just like fairly nothing. You sit there, you do nothing, you eventually wait, the birds come down and pick you up. And in our own lives, we can at times be on that pathway. The other thing that Jesus highlighted was the rocky ground, where the seed can go into the rocky ground and it doesn't have much hope for growth and development and just stays there and little bits come up and then they can't continue and they die out again. And at times in our lives, we have that shallow ground that we're a part of with the rocks. And we need to know how we can do some moving. And then the third thing Jesus highlighted was the thorns. And that at times, the seeds can land up with the thorns. The thorns grow up. You think they might be good, but they land up just covering you, blocking you, and being so unhelpful in your life. The thorns. And then finally, he said there was the good soil. And that's what we seek to be a part of, is the good soil. So let me walk on to what we're doing today, where we stay with that theme. But this time, it's the weeds. The weeds. And again, three points that I'll highlight, two of them directly related to the weeds, and then a different point as well. But the first point is this, when you know there is a weed, pull it out. When you know there is a weed, pull it out. We need to be so aware within our lives that at times there are those weeds that can be a part of ourselves. And we need to acknowledge that and when we can do that, we can go around saying, uh-uh, no, it's not, no, it's not. But if we know that it is, it is. And the best thing one can do is to uproot that weed. And so we need to look at that in terms of our lives. The second area is those who are close to us. And we need to be very apprehensive about that. It's so easy to go around pulling the weeds from other people instead of really acknowledging what's going on in me. And we need to be cautious, but sometimes it's very clear in terms of those weeds that need to be extracted. The third area is in a group area, such as the church. And at times, one can discern that what we have going on here is the weed. And as much as one try, can try to care and go around, sometimes there are issues Sometimes there are even individuals who are just a weed in the life of what one is trying to build up. And it goes so far, but there's a need for doing the extracting of that weed. And then in our own lives of faith, 
we discover that there are those weeds that can easily block us from being able to carry on, whether it's excuses and I can't do this and I can't do that, we need to throw those weeds away so that we can be freed in our lives of faith. So when you know there is a weed, pull it out. <clears throat> the second thing is from the scripture today in particular is that sometimes we need to leave the weeds alone. Sometimes we need to leave the weeds alone. Now, it seems odd compared to the first point, but it's true. And what Jesus says, let me just quote what is said in that gospel message. Jesus says, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. You know, at times... It's unclear what the weeds are. And the danger is, is that we can do the uprooting and pull out the wheat along with the weeds or instead of the weeds. And we need to be apprehensive at times as to what we do because sometimes it's not clear. I mean, I'm not a gardener at all and I admire the many gardeners that are here. But, you know, I know, for example, if there's a dandelion, you can see a dandelion in the grass and you can rip that out. But some of the other ones, I just don't know. And what Jesus is saying is that we need to wait with some of the weeds until it's really clear what they are. Let me just go back to some of those issues that I was highlighting in our own lives Sometimes we are very clear about what we are doing, being inappropriate, and sometimes we're less clear about that. And maybe we need to just let it go for a while and do some more discernment as we go along down the road. With those whom we know and love, particularly, for example, with young people, adolescents, it's very easy when their children you know, if they come along with a crayon and start writing all over our wall, you go, no, you can't do that. Stop it. That's wrong. However, when we move into the older age, the adolescent youth stage, and suddenly there's issues with, so who are the friends? And where do we draw the line? And do we just go, no, with the curfew, or do we allow them to do some searching and discernment? And similarly with some of the other issues that our young people have, phones, where do we put the limitations on that? Do we take them all away, or do we allow something and allow them to do some of the maturing that they need to do? And it's a fine line. And at times we need to be aware if they really are the weeds, you pull them out. But one needs to have the trust and the growth of the relationship with the young people as well. And then even in the church, one can easily go and say, oh, oh there's a weed and there's a weed and there's a weed. And you can try and do all the pulling out because it just doesn't fit in with who we were. But at times it might not necessarily be a weed at all. And we need to just hold off. And if it's a little bit uncomfortable, that's okay. Let's just do the discernment and see and enable God's grass and wheat to really grow amongst us. So those are some of the things that we need to hold on to in our own lives of faith in terms of sometimes we need to leave the weeds alone. But the final point that I want to make, and let me just highlight what I've said, is that when you know there is a weed, pull it out, and sometimes we need to leave the weeds alone. But I want to move on to a different point, and it's now from the New Testament reading that we had, and it's this. We are adopted by God. We are adopted by God. It's a concept that we need to hold on to and acknowledge. Just listen to some of the words that Paul used in that reading that we had. He says, you have received a spirit of adoption, 
When we cry, Abba, Father, we are children of God. Just listen again. You have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, we are children of God. It's just an amazing concept to hold on to. Instead of just being us down here all alone, we are told that God has come to us and has adopted us as his own. Let me just give you <clears throat> an illustration, and it's just an illustration, so don't take it over literally, but it's an interesting point. There was a man <clears throat> at one time, <clears throat> excuse me, my <clears> throat, there was a, he was a judge, and he lived in this wonderful home that he loved so much, and he would go there and stay there, and he really valued the home that he lived in. But there were other people who were around, and there was one little foster boy who kept on coming over to his home and sort of taunting his home. And the judge was like really upset about that. And one day, this little boy came along, and he picked up a stone, and he threw it into the window. And it broke the window, and it went inside, and broke some of the furniture and pieces that he had inside his home. And the judge was so upset. And the next thing this little boy realized was that the judge had called him to court, and he had to go to court. And this little boy went into court, totally befuddled with what was going to be happening, and there the judge was overseeing him. And this little boy looked at the judge, and the judge said, what you did was so wrong. And he said, I'm going to fine you a thousand dollars. And this boy was just horrified at what was taking place. And then the judge said, but I'll tell you what I want to do. I want to adopt you as my own son. I want you to come into my home and I'm going to write out that check for $1,000, and you will be with me. Do you know, this is what God has done for us. There we were, we had messed up everything again and again and again. And we had hurt God so hard. And yet God came and said, I love you, and I'm going to pay all all of that debt for you. This is my son coming here. You will be released. You will be freed. You can be adopted by me, and I will be your father. This is the incredible gift that is offered to us. We are freed and released from everything. We are embraced and adopted by our living God. So in all of our lives, we tackle the weeds that are around us. Let us discern how we move with what needs to be pulled out and what we need to let go. But finally, let us hold on to the truth that we're not alone, that our living God has adopted us as his children. Amen. We now stand and we confess our faith together in the Nicene Creed.